Okay, we're here at the Cloverleaf Tavern with, at the part the public doesn't see. Down in the basement yes. with Ryan Dorchak, the owner. Ryan, so this is... Can I just live down here? Can I just, like, move a bed in here? Absolutely. And, uh, I promise I won't drink anything. <laughs> so tell us, you were, you were explaining about the, the, uh, the nitrogen. Yes, and, what yeah. we have up here is, a, is what's called a gas blender. Right. And it uh, mixes CO2 with nitrogen to the perfect um, proportions to push nitro beers and ale versus lager since they both require um, different percentages of each gas right. um, to make to ensure the quality of the beer. And you're saying some, a lot of bars don't use this. They don't go to this length. Correct. Some beers, which you never want to use, use actually compressed air, which is the worst thing you can use. Others use straight CO2. Um, and then other use a gas blend, which actually isn't that bad. It's a 75-25% blend, um, which actually we used at one time, and then we converted over to this box, which um, most bars who are serious about beers should definitely uh, consider if they haven't already. So give us a little tour here. Forget Absolutely. about the wine. So, I want to I talk. We want to talk yes. beer here. So this <laughs> this cool shelf over here um, uh, cool is shelf. all of our aging beer. So uh, we bring in a lot of different beers. We put them up on this shelf and we can completely forget about them uh, for at least a year. Really? And up to up to two years. What do you, I see founders? What what and founders is that? Special for less. The, the founders. That's actually a uh, their backwoods bastard. Right. And we also have their imperial stout aging as well. You age the the bastard. Yeah. We age the bastard. No, I mean I wasn't trying to be Absolutely. smart, but but how uh, it improves the taste. Yeah. Yes. Um, I've had that before. I've never really. If you have a beer that tends to be higher in alcohol, where some people call it hot when you taste it because it has that alcoholic taste up front, right. that tends to dissipate um, when you age the beer, and a lot of some of the like nuances of the barrel will start to come out. You get more of the vanilla flavor and things okay. like that. So about a year, what's what's good? I think that the maximum amount of time that you should age is about up to two years. Okay. Yeah, up to two years, 18 months, one year is always good, especially for like the stouts and the barley wines and things of that nature. Um, so we have a lot of cool different beers along here. Um, We're going back deeper into the... Yes. Ooh. All our empty kegs stay outside the cooler. And then into the keg room. Oh. And as you can see, every, every beer has its own regulator. And that's the secondary regulator. Um, on the gas is the primary regulator. Some people don't even have secondary regulators, which is again a no-no. Every single beer requires a different amount of pressure to push it up, um, so you don't have excessive foaming when you're pouring the beer. Um, UFO so, here. So it's very important that you have secondary regulators and they're all set to the proper pressure to push your beer properly. We have our lines cleaned um, every other week. Okay. That's again something that you do not want to miss. If you're at a bar that doesn't clean their lines, right. um, you yeah, can taste skunky. that infection, yeah. skunky type yeah. of yeah. flavor. Behind this shelf, we have two power packs. And the power packs are running glycol through the beer lines all the way to the tap tower to make sure that they're cold from the cooler all the way to the draft tower. Okay. That's just about my favorite beer, anything they make. Yes. Sam Smith. I love Sam Smith. Somebody just gave me their double chocolate stout, or organic chocolate stout. I don't think I've seen that. It's really, really nice. So all of our and for And for those who have not converted, there's always yes. that. There's, there's now you were saying, Light. when you took over, give me that statistic again, with Coors Light. Yes, how much? when I took over, there was about 40% of our draft lot, draft sales were Coors Light. Um, today, they're, um, around, they hover between 3 and 4%. Wow. And uh, just one last question. So, how much, how much different bottles do you have? Give me an idea. Of what's on tap? How many? We, how many? Yeah, yeah, we have 24 bottles on draft. Uh, I'm sorry, 24 draft beers. We yeah. have 80 different bottles, okay. and then we have uh, 15 to 20 bottles that are rotating um, seasonally, and then another 15 bottles that are rotating weekly. And you went, and you've won. I know uh, the, the major uh, beer, you know, craft beer award, you know, best craft beer bar in the Northeast. Yep. Now I know uh, some craft, uh, some bars have more beers. What do you think gets you that honor? What, what, the variety? It's, the yeah, it's the ver it's the variety of beer that we have, right. which is the big thing. We're changing all the time. Another one of the big things is the beer program that we have. Right. And another thing, very passionate about, is that your staff is knowledgeable and can teach the guests 
about beer. And you're saying they That's have to the get t- t- they have to be qualified. Absolutely, how? they need to have a certified. They need to be certified in the, as a certified beer server through the Cicerone program. Okay. Um, and then we have a few people that are uh, gung ho about trying to get their second level uh, certified Cicerone. Right. Uh, we currently have two certified Cicerone on staff, and we have about six that are going to try for their certified Whoa. Cicerone. Serious. In this coming March. Great. Thanks. Thanks for Absolutely. the time.